Hello folks down here. I got another screen up there so hopefully I can make this less painful for me and in turn this less painful for you. Welcome. Well you already to do you are. Welcome to the Fukushima Horror Show, I think is probably a good name for this. Hi Miss Milky. Why not wave to a camera? I see you. Uh, we got everybody saying hi, I think, and this works out, hi camshaft, third watch, uh, da, 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 da. say hi to a few people for a change, it's only a little bit's going to show up here, you know, there's a link below, and, because I've been going down this rabbit hole at Chernobyl, for the last couple of days in order to try to get some more context. It's not that I don't know about it, it's just I have to get on top of it I, in my own mind for sure to refresh everything. And like the ones that intrigue is 600,000 people went in there, soldiers, and got medals and then got big cancers. Uh, a lot of these people were able to only go into spots for 30 seconds, two minutes, say, and then they're off the site. But a lot of guys were given uh, some of the soldiers their badges to take in there and get their uh, rads. Uh, certainly not all of them by no means. And the video below is about uh, 3,800 of them that didn't care about the rads. Uh, all together, officially, they're claiming there's 600,000 people went in there. And then uh, numbers are, um, more realistically, about a million people went in there and got incredible doses that um, will drop a robot, let's put it that way, eight or 12,000. And these are different types of, these are not Beckwolds, these are... Uh, I got it all up there, actually, because I'm trying to... Now, it's a term we don't usually hear about Fukushima, because these are about the x-rays. This is about the actual energy. This is like, you can cook chicken with this stuff in a hurry. Um, and the guys on the roof, and that picture you're looking at was from that error. Up a picture for is Christine? Oh, good one. I'll go back to that after for sure. Um, these guys on the roof, see that guy right there? He's got sneakers on. He's got sneakers on. And the doses you're getting there, like 200 for an hour, will definitely finish you off. Um, hang on. Roti chins, is it? They still use that in the military, apparently, for ships for counting the energy, the x-rays. Uh, this is important uh, because that's not MOX fuel we're talking about. But anyway, the, the title of the video pretty well says, says it all because Chernobyl was one third the size of number one reactor. Hence, and, and it was only a 30% meltdown they got it under so-called control. Uh, which is far from control. Uh, it's like a thousand Hiroshima bombs have come out of that, or who knows how much really. And that, what you got to remember in context with all of this, is all the pools that were on top of that roof that wasn't on top of the Chernobyl, because they weren't as stupid as General Electric was to build that design. And there was three scientists that quit, wouldn't even build a design. They knew it was flawed. And they built it on a earthquake. But the guy you see in the picture, he's got his sneakers on. And he's got this little shovel, because if he uses a big shovel, he'll be carrying too much. See? But everything he's running over, they're trying to make a path out there, and then the next lock comes in behind it, and a million people... Uh, went on the site doing those routines where they would just run in and dig a little path for the next ones. They can run in further with less radiation. 
And that's what they've been doing at Fukushima in every sense of the word, in every sense of that word. And those guys in the pictures, they um, in the video below, they were probably better equipped than most of the street homeless people that the Yakuza's have grabbed, Shanghai and brought in there to get their doses. And those people won't get a medal they can swing and say, look. Everybody will point and say, he's crazy. He's a homeless guy all of his life. And then they shank him of their wages on top of that. They can only last so long. So a lot of these people got deadly doses. So the graveyards around there are being radiated because when these people die shortly after, a lot of them, if they're lucky enough to have an after, if the bodies doesn't just drop right there on the site. Like the whole planet is in denial at this stage, but unfortunately as that ocean dies and we see three and 400 mile storms that are 100 mile hurricane wide eyes on them, F4s and F5s rather, just remember what that one done down to the Philippines with all the radiated water and that leveled everything in the Philippines. Leveled everything in the Philippines. Had a hundred mile way. I'm laughing with the gallows humor, but a hundred mile. It's not laughter. It's gallows humor again. But a hundred mile way tornado, an F4, stronger. Nobody really knows, but it huffed and puffed and tore down everything there and destroyed. How can you um, think about rebuilding after having that happen to you? Every house in your country got leveled. See, we only should only see that on Mars. And we had two of these typhoons converge on Fukushima just after October's 25th, 2013 earthquake, and they've been offline ever since. You can't blame them. And I'm not, I'm not yelling at the people, the victims that go in there every day, okay? For starters, I'm yelling at the military industrial machine that just won't give it up. It keeps creating all these wicked isotopes that we don't need them. I mean, we were able to make power 50 years ago. We didn't need any more extra scarier isotopes, only for crazies. And those crazies also own your institutions, your universities, where 4,200 peer review academic journals are published from every day that you paid for with your tax dollars and your loved ones extraordinarily expensive educations. All their time was put on these peer review academic journals. They were locked away every day, three a minute, thousand pages. So you live in this world where smart means you watch a lot of Fox or CNN or BBC for most people in Hollywood. Most people, they get all their cliches from Hollywood. And that's an issue for the time being but people are going to automatically are capable of getting smart, even though they've been dumbed down their entire life. They've been inundated with 65,000 unregulated chemicals that have uh, infested every aspect of their lives because they're unregulated. And there's no biological or environmental impact studies done on those 65,000 chemicals. And 2,200 of them can be, are considered food. So you can take those 2,200 chemicals, make food up, put a wrapper on it, and give it to a kid. It's not moral, it's not ethical, but people do it. Your supermarkets and your corner shops are about 85% full of that and the GMO with no nutrients in it whatsoever. And then we're facing a radiated planet that has been ongoing for about 50 years. They're relentless with this pollution. And so building one, unit one, I'm not yelling, trying not to because I know it gets a little distorted, but Unit 1 is nine Chernobyls, and Unit 2 is nine Chernobyls without the pools above it. And Unit 3 is, is a million. Or, or, or I'm not going to say the number because I don't want to, but it's supposed to be nine million when you do the actual comparison of Fukushima and Chernobyl. But Fukushima's got something extra going on. They're melted. They're gone. They're gone down to the, hopefully somewhere they're, all the water is running over them from that little river 100 feet down below that topsoil that they brought in and built the whole facility on top of. And they're pouring all this water and you have all the rain and the snow and everything else and all these 
rods that got blasted all over that site. Right, let's, let's get a few things straight, right? You see that? And it's really important, though, that people get that in their heads. There we go. So when that building went boom, that threw rods into all the other buildings in the pools above it. Projectiles, 1,500 pounds, 60 rods in a bundle, 1,500 pound bundles, 12 foot long, and full of these pellets that are uranium, plutonium. This is the most. And there's all these weaponized isotopes we know nothing about and particulates and, and enhanced, you know, through the nuclear fission in order to, to get the most deadliest imaginable. And then when they're finished with it, they put it right above it in case there's an accident. Psh, finish off the whole planet and destroy an entire ocean. But those rods that blew up, see, they went all over the site. That's what, this is so important. Just that alone, not counting the three melted cores. And by the way, the, the melted cores, right, they're gone straight down the center of that thing, right? And you can't get near that. And so what their solution was, they're going to build a shelter around it, but they can't actually get in there with, um, you know, uh, torches and everything. Apart. That is, that's never going to happen, ever. But what they decided they're going to really do, because they got to do something, is they're going to put up one of these prefabs where they just get it up and it slips down and slides and there's nobody up there with a 916, you know, socket attaching that stuff, like you would see with a skyscraper, say. I used to do that for a while. I actually used to hang off a skyscraper and they would raise up these things and it was a 916 and you had the engineer alongside you, he would pass you out these nuts. You were telling me these nuts, but you were all safety harnesses and everything else, but it was a fun job because you're hanging off the top of a building. It was always it was a fun job anyway. But um, I know these this fab and how the cranes and all that work too. I remember all that. And so, but these these ones, they just hook on. And you're not going to see no cutting torches in there because they can't do anything, see? And inside of it, it's this mess. And they can never get near that for at least, they should build a sarcophagus over it and can try to stop the you know the 9000 degree Fahrenheit temperature blowing that stuff up into our atmosphere because there's hundreds of tons of it already atomized and gone up into the atmosphere into the troposphere into the stratosphere and you know you have to come to terms with that's already happened it's hemorrhaging into the ocean and the model and the model is usually somewhere right there but I'll get it Got a big file here, and sometimes I don't because I got too many. So they build a sarcophagus around that. See, they build a sarcophagus around that. They can't get it tear it apart, and it ends up like that. Back to where we started here. And these guys uh, were flying over Chernobyl, for instance. See this helicopter? That all that crew died, the pilot, because he got into a radioactive cloud, and uh, he became disoriented, and then the helicopter went down. And the guy who uh, took that picture, he died shortly after. Uh, hang on a second. These are soldiers that have no idea what they're doing. They're going to go get a deadly dose in 60 seconds. And there ain't going to be nobody there to help you in the near future. And they made their own apron. Right, you can imagine. And the guy, like I say, who was taking those pictures there. His camera was buried with him when he died because it was so radioactive. Um... I'm going to come over and say hi in a second to a few people. So I'll bring the thing up, get it ready for the next round. And I'm going to leave that one right there for the time being. Hi, folks. Getting busy there, is it? Because i got another screen brought in. So I can have the two screens side by side because this just how it goes. 
Oh, I don't know. Can't keep up. And hi Dudley. Hi Paul. Hi Verse Tube. Charles. Patrick. Leo. B330. Big Now TV. Hey. Albert. Checks and Balances. News Eye. Cucumber. Manny. I'm getting better at these names, ain't I? Uh, Manny. Jester. Hi Kurt Sir K. Hi Mark. M Make. M A K K. You already got me. Ding me once on that one. And I'm ahead of Nuber Magic. I got all my pictures down in the lower side with the microphone. <laughs> Boo yeah. Hi La Ran. Real. Can't pronounce that one. So. There we go. We got everybody. Back to business. And this is what we got to do. We got to inform people and get them so tuned in that the propaganda they can deal with it when it's coming at them and if you had millions of people that were informed reasonably informed we can change the game in a large way but you can't get away from the radiation so we'll be covering a little bit of that more later on but back to where I was talking about is that one two and three are gone and three is a million times worse than Chernobyl one is nine times worse, not counting the pole that was on top of it. And these rods, folks, if there's a piece in the room this big, I don't finish the sentence, and then anybody comes to my door, falls down, and then anybody sees that and walks over, they falls down dead. And then, you know, people walk and pass, they'll die. It's so dangerous, um, so toxic, up close like that. And... Because it's Mox fuel that's in that one, right? That's what makes this one so scary, so frightening. And then all the rods that are sitting on the edge, like it all gets aerosoled. And this one is not really accurate because we know the Japanese, we know the Japanese uh, done the fire balloons in 1944. And these balloons will come over in the jet stream at 100 miles an hour. And so every 24 hours, 2,400 miles. So three days later, it was on the coastline of Canada and the United States. And six days later, it was much further interior. And some blogger called me out. Um, who was an angry administrator? That was awesome. I destroyed him. The very next day, I was tickled pink that somebody was going to try to use that routine against me. I'm sure they're still at it, but... You know, telling me that that's not accurate was 100% correct. Because immediately I went out and looked at that numbers again, 1944. I said, oh, yeah, that's the one. And then I read it all again. I said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll go back to bed now and I'll wake him up tomorrow with a good one. And explain to him how the jet streams really work. And by the way, uh, something I didn't cover last couple of nights for some reason, I don't think I did, was that the jet streams... And the ocean currents is important for your future, that you take that into consideration. Yes, things are going into the troposphere and the stratosphere, but these plumes that are coming out of those bowels of hell, those three melted cores, every time there's an earthquake, let me bring that other one up for you. And see, every time there's an earthquake, the rods that are blown all over that from the other ones alongside of it, boom, 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 getting slammed with all these rods and these 60 rods, 12 feet wide, blown apart. And think about those pellets going into Building 4, slammed into it, 1,500 pounds of rods, and they're all pellets with the zirconian coating on it. That burns off, goes pyroplastic because it's in the air. And that could have caused the release of gases in Building 4 in the original explosion. It could have been a melted core. It could have been, you know... It, Apparently, uh, the floor is split, melted, it's split. That could have been the earthquake picking up the entire hundreds of millions of tons, right, and dropping it like an earthquake does. It's like a blanket for those types of earthquake, probably felt like 800, 900 miles away. Uh, you know, we seen on the 25th of October where buildings in Tokyo were rocking and they came out with this fable about a tsunami and it has to be a meter high before you declare it, and they declared one with a 22-inch 
they upgraded to 30 inch to try to make themselves not look so stupid. But that was the misdirection for everybody because everybody said, oh, a tsunami, and it, and it brought back all these. But that's because they knew it was centered outside and that this was this is their PR game. They already got into place in case something like that happens is to come out with that story immediately, see? To deceive you, to manipulate you, and then to get people just to ignore it. And then the next fable is Building 4. Uh, it's rods everywhere. It's so toxic. There's, you won't see anybody in there with you know, building scaffolds. You're not going to see any pictures of anybody inside of that wreckage you're looking at, you know, that's full of rods because they'll fall down. You'll see a dead body there somewhere. That's all you'll ever see, and they'll never get that body back. And so they're building these towers around it. And so everybody's going to get lulled into La La Land. Let me come down to a couple of those pictures. I'll get it to once. Hang on. There we go. So they're building that over those rubble piles, and they're going to catch the gas, and then they're going to vent that out into the atmosphere. And the idea is ultimately you're going to build big sarcophaguses over these things. You're never going in there. You can never do that. They're just wasting time burning up the ocean on us. That's what they're doing. And if you're not familiar with that, I have no problem reminding everybody, even though I don't like it myself. I hate looking at that picture. But that's based upon two weeks of two weeks release originally. And this was based upon a model where they put dye in the ocean and, and uh, GPS bobbers in the ocean for the surface currents. And they made this computer model. And so they can insert the data about the releases and they know that the Pacific brine is right off the coastline of Japan and it whisks it right straight across the ocean. You know, we, a lot of it's headed towards uh, California. You won't be able to sell your whole in home in California soon because uh, that whole plume is coming right around the coastline and it leaves no oxygen behind because of all how thick this is and how much is coming out every day. Minimum is around 4.3 billion gallons on, on the aquifers underneath it that's getting flushed out directly into the ocean. They're spraying all the water on the ground to keep it moisture because all the rods are sank down into that topsoil. And so then all these particulates, because a lot of these rods have burnt there, and so all of that gets goes down, lands on the river bay below and gets washed out to sea right away. Because if this water, because it's getting superheated, you got to realize there was a million gallons a minute normally went into each of those reactors. And they, they wouldn't reach 9,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures like they've seen there, which means, you know, it's gone nuclear. And so they're just, they got no intentions to tell them the population what's coming their way. And so you need people out there with a, a, an understanding of what's truly going on there to control what's going to happen in the very near future. Uh, because people will eventually get it in the near future. It can't last forever because the ocean is filling up. And then the currents are carrying it. And what happens is it leaves no oxygen behind, and, no, and so fish can't live in that. But it's so hot. right? That's your global warming. All of, the, all of this is, because this has been going on for many years, but this is overboard. The radiation to the ocean has been non-stop for almost 50 years, folks. And so they've been at this for 50 years trying to deceive you about it. But this one is over the top, right? It's going to destroy the ocean. Now, the model shows six years, but that's not based upon the, the emitted three to 400 tons a day that's getting discharged out from the water they're pumping in that they can't account for, so it has to be going down and washing out. And then there's the river that runs underneath it. That all mixes. That don't dilute it. That disperses it. That disperses it. It's like, uh, and so you hear all these lies about diluting. You can't dilute radiation. Everything around it still becomes, even if you took one isotope, everything becomes contaminated now around you because of that isotope. 
Uh, and, it's, you know, these uraniums have a billion to five billion, who knows? They've already been on this planet for four and a half billion or so years. And then they were weaponized. So they're extraordinarily vicious. Uh, I, I used to call them critters, but they're actually monsters. Each and every little isotope will give you unbelievable cancers. And you can't search the human body for most of these isotopes. You need 1,300 Geiger counters and they're all calibrated to these isotope. But if the isotope gets inside you, you got no way of uh, picking it up. You can barely pick up some of the cesium, right? And that's why you hear them talking about the one and the twos all the time, and the certain iodines. It's because that's all they can really pick up. They don't even try to pick up plutonium or the uranium or the strontium, right? It, because it's overload for people. And then people says, well, how many more isotopes are they? in those bowels of hell, coming out of their aerosols and atomized 9,000 degree Fahrenheit every time the earthquake. And so that picture you're looking at, the ocean is full of uh, pure energy. Each, each molecule is just pure, uh, nanoparticle is just pure energy. And, uh, and uh, 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 Beckwell can flip a grain of sand on a beach, each beat. That's how much energy he's basically putting out. Think about that one. So that's heat. That's energy. So the ocean warms up, and that's why we have this massive stomp and ground and pound happen in Philippines. And so these storms are going to get bigger, more powerful. And I know Dutch Sink had put out a video about the laser, and I'm not saying that didn't happen because I know they had the capabilities to do stuff like that. And there's HARP, and there's other quite a lot of other uh, technology they use for weather modification. It's been going on... I mean, look at Vietnam, where they chemtrail the skies for nine years with Agent Orange, with these big, ugly B-52s. And just so many pictures on the Internet. And they've done that for nine years, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It was to remove the foliage, they said. It's a toxin. It's banned everywhere on the planet. They knew what it was. There was no illusion to what they'd done. And then all that runs off into the ocean. But let me keep going down that road for a bit. you got Sellafield, England... There's 8 million liters a day going into the ocean. Everybody's just, no one is even paying attention except for a small organization. But nobody, this is going on every day. They can never, ever have they eat, rather, st you know, cleaned up a nuclear site. You can't. What are you going to do with it? That is the nuclear dumping ground itself, see? And then they were firing 5.5 million bullets a month in Iraq, and Af or Iraq, month after month. Look that up on the Department of Justice websites. And um, about half of that came out of McAllister, Oklahoma. And that's all he makes is depleted uranium rounds. So you're blasting that all over the country. And that's the real deal. That's not coated. That's not tipped, okay, at all. That's solid 238, 239. Um, this is just pure yellow cake compressed and made into bullets at McAllister's. There's four of these bomb factories in uh, America, and that's all they make is depleted uranium rounds. They got a billion tons of it, and that's how they were planning on getting rid of it, was blasting it in, all, in brown people's countries. You got five million orphans in Afghanistan to get those 11,000 Taliban. But, you know, and everything, every nightmare out there is to get that 11,000 Taliban. All those drone strikes to get that 11,000 Taliban. 29,000 rapes reported in the military every year. That's considered about 27% of the actual rapes in the military raping each other. Raping each other. So if they're raping 29,000 of their own every year, how many are they raping in the countries they're occupying? Why well, they're blasting around those 5.5 million rounds a month. Imagine doing 5.5 million rounds a month in New York City, month after month after month. You going to get any civilians? Yeah? You figure? I figure. And so when you take a big city and you look at the 5.5 million, it's a whole different game, isn't it? in your own neighborhood, 5.5 million rounds every month. So there ain't a window with a bullet through it, depleted uranium round through it. Go shoot up everybody's fields. So, and so it's not just that. Then you got uh, 45,000 barrels just dumped right off of San Francisco. But there's hundreds of thousands that were dumped in the ocean where the boats had so much time on the ocean and they have to dump it off the side or they get their doses. They get their rads. Now we got an ocean that looks like that thing there. A lot quicker than the projections, because the projections didn't use the fact that 300 
at the 400 a minute tons a day and then the underflow the 1 million gallons a minute it needs anyway to stay cool that's the only reason we're back on that site and so all that coming into that same model you're looking at right now what's it going to look like what's 4.3 billion gallons a day extra added on to that model going to look like now think about the thousands of miles for since the beginning of time of clouds every day thousands of miles of clouds picking up moisture true and then bringing it to our coastlines and around our continents and around our planet and into our stratospheres or tropospheres yeah you can get that picture and so this has been going on though for a very long time so that ocean has been radiated and let's get something else straight is like you say back background radiation like bananas and airplanes has nothing to do with this conversation right nothing to do with Fukushima or Chernobyl's uh, radiation, the gamma, the betas, the alphas, the isotopes, has nothing to do with that. Anybody who tries to use that in an equation is a dummy. Never even thought about it. Just spit it out. Probably not their own fault. They're getting paid a lot of money just to read that teleprompter anyway. And you don't get no teleprompter here. You just get the reality of it so you get a chance to make up your own mind. So you don't get uh, jerked around, so you can make uh, informed decisions. And once again, let's go back to that for a second. We know the jet streams, we know the El Ninos, the El Ninos, and how that moves the jet stream back and forth. If you look that up and how it's applicable to you, whether, if you're right under the jet stream, it's probably not a good spot. The Pacific Ocean, the way it mixes, the way the salinity and the speeds of the water, the different Right, the different temperatures of the water and the different temperatures of the equator where it's trying to spill out into the other oceans is actually pretty cool how that works. Thank goodness it doesn't just hemorrhage straight in to each ocean. It, of course, an ocean up against another ocean is going to mix. There are different temperatures, there's a different salinity, there's an equator ocean that's whisk it right back towards the Pacific. <laughs> but I mean, it's still going to be leaching like the hell out there. And then eventually, over the years, that ocean is going to get heat up. And storms are going to get bigger and bigger in that area. And we don't really know, but you can definitely assume that is possible. You can't rule anything like that out, because that's exactly what will happen. I mean, all the global warmings have been saying, oh, you know, as the ocean heats up from global warming, the storms are going to get much bigger and much more powerful. Boy, they got something right, didn't they? I mean, global warming is real, but it's pig it's, this is the piggyback for global warming was all the radiation they've been shooting over Iraq and Afghanistan, dumping off San Francisco, the two billion gallons at Hanford that they just dumped into the ground. There's 41 miles of open pits of yellow cake. A Dixie cup of it will kill everybody in your workplace. A Dixie cup of it will kill everybody at Tim Hortons. In an hour, every hour, of that stuff, because it's uranium and everything else, plutonium, for a billion years. Lug them all out, throw them all in there. Same as Fukushima's doing right now. Same as, same as Chernobyl done. You didn't last an hour. You would fall apart on the roof of those places. You, you know, you would, uh, not to be gross about it, but this is fact. You would stop, and out would come your, your, your spleen and your kidney your liver and then you would fall face down and die you would drop your pants because you couldn't hold it you didn't know what was going on and that's happened to Nagasaki that happened in Hiroshima to the women there was many cases of women's I won't go down to detail because it's heartbreaking but that's what happened to them basically it was your uterus actually for the women it was more susceptible and the radiation even small amounts certainly a lot less than what's in the ocean with just a two-week model just, just see, just stick to that two-week model. This radiation is so potent, so toxin that it, it. Think of the ocean again as a soup of life, which is what it was, and that you can take a drop out of the ocean anywhere and put it under a microscope. And there's millions of creatures, and they, and now if you've done that and you put one of these isotopes by it, they will all go pop, 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 and and they'd all be dead. And then as more water came along, that isotope would. Pop, 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 up all of them and that would go on for a billion years right so as, as that isotopes disperses or what they like to call delude right <laughs> which means it gets out there and it just pumps it's the most hideous thing imaginable period and the fact that they sprayed salt water in on in on these buildings because what choice did they have well the sulfur from 
the salt water does this unique, weirdo, frightening, monstrous thing where it, it creates a structure that will allow uranium and strontium and plutonium and cesium to get inside of and become its own little nuclear reactor at the atomic size. And then that, that's so light, it gets whisked up by the typhoons, by the storms, just by the heat from the 9,000 degree Fahrenheit bowels of hills, the three bowels of hills that are Fukushima, the meteorite, that's a meteorite coming at us, see, period. That's the worst meteorite you can ever imagine. That's a meteorite that's going to come at us and it's going to throw up lava all over this planet and everybody's going to be just scrambling in the future. Because you can't see it, you can't smell it, you can't taste it, you can't feel it, you can't pick it up. You don't understand it. But if you look up anything I'm saying and everything I'm saying, it's easy to see that is much worse than what I can draw for you, unfortunately. It's not funny uh, because it's it's not uh, it's not even humorous. Uh, and there's so many people out there that are you know, pushing back, and it won't take you long to get educated. There's lots of links under my uh, video uh, when if you come here early, and I got to post it early. And I like to post it early uh, because it gives people a chance to, to catch it and then check the timer. And as long as your computer timer is set, right, it'll show up. And another way to check to see if I got an event, one of these events, they're called events. So you go to my video section on my front page, and you click the upload, and you'll see playlist upload. So go to Upload, and then you'll see Event. Click it again, you'll get the event. And so click on Event, and then it'll show up uh, if I got one scheduled for the day. So that's another way you can find that, because I know so many people are having problems. I did put out a video today. got some bad reviews. That's okay. Um, I still got uh, three more to go. That's number two of how to, to do blogs, make videos, and just the basics of equipment and the downloads to use them, how to use them. And there's a lot more things going on with the hamster. That was just like an introduction. And that's the whole point. It's so difficult. I have to break it up into five videos. And then only, you know, if just one person learns and gets proficient at it, um, that was well worth that time it takes. Like the one today was around six hours, six and a half hours of hardcore to put it together. Because I'm determined to get that stuff out there and then be able to link to it for people that are trying and they have an opportunity and there's the software. That's important. So they can make their own videos and put together their own presentations and spread, uh, use their power, the most powerful thing they got is their voice, your voice. That's the most powerful thing imaginable. You have no idea how powerful your voice can be, uh, no matter how shy you are or how unarticulated you are or that you think you are. Everybody got it in them, see? That's the whole point. And at some point, people are going to start speaking out, and I'm going to get pushed off all the pages, and you'll never see me again, because the voices will at some point rise, and a lot better, a lot smarter, a lot more informed people will fill in the voids and, and carry on that pushback. A lot of us will disappear, because as this starts to come out, there's going to be a lot of really angry people, and I see it all the time with people. That's so important that everybody used their voices. That's the most important thing ever because that's what they fear the most and that's what gets the most response. And people at some point have to decide what's more important, uh, the nonsense or trying to organize something to deal with this. And the only way to deal with this because we lock up all of our academic journals every day, 4,200 peer-reviewed studies that are published every day are locked up in the ivory towers of Elsevier, Springer, and Wiley. That has to change. This terrorist routine got to change, you know? The terror is that ocean. The terror is Fukushima. The terror is it's going to kill about 95% of all the species on this planet, period. It just killed all life in the ocean. It guaranteed that one. Even if you were to try to switch it off now, you couldn't switch it off. These plumes are so thick and so heavy and so toxic. They're only looking at the cesium. They're not even looking at the uranium. They're not even looking at the plutonium. They're not looking at that strontium, the major players that, and then their family trees and the 1,300 weaponized isotopes that we know about, but the 3,000 that exist or more that we don't have no concept of. We can't get 
and because it's locked up because it's top secret they're using that to make motors to get them to another planet they're going to kill this planet to force us to get off this planet and then they're going to take that technology and get off themselves and leave everything behind first they're going to go to the moon if they got to and they'll go over to mars but ultimately they need all the resources on this planet to pull that one off see and they need all the isotopes that they can possibly make even if it kills the planet because they're close now they've been locking up 4200 peer reviews amazing studies every day that you paid for your loved ones produce that the professors are happy to have their name says, oh, I got published. Nobody can read it because it's so expensive, but I got published. It's just a job, see? But it must, you know, they don't write a book because 50 or 60 people might read their book. But when it comes to cracking these things, that's what we need is an open, uh, the open, the, the ivory towers where all our academic journals that we paid for and that could make the change. And we need to put all the institutions on this planet all the universities got to produce 4,200 peer-reviewed studies to deal with the Pacific Ocean, to deal with Fukushima, to deal with Hanford, to deal with Sellafield, to deal with Iraq, to deal with Afghanistan, to deal with the four continents that we sprayed these dirty bombs all over. Those bullets, those 5.5 million bullets a month that your taxpayers' money pay for, that's dirty bombs. That's dirty bombs, every one of them. Your seagulls now are shooting dirty bombs in, in Fukushima. How twisted is that one? In Sellafield, England, they shoot the seagulls if they land. In Fukushima, they wash the radiation off their car because it really doesn't matter. So that was a long, long rant and ramble. Uh, I need to stop and get my breath back. I'm good to go again, but let's come up and see. How long I've been going here? Very good, very good, Dana. Forty-one minutes, huh? That's pretty good. Forty. That's longer than normal, though. That's like twice as long as normal. Sorry, folks. The whole point is, I'm so frustrated with everything I learn every day. I'm just so frustrated that this is happening. How can this even be happening? It's just a really, truly bad, bad, bad time you know I don't even know how to tell my friends originally I don't know I just don't know what to say I'm afraid to say things and because I know so much I'm even more scared to say something but how are you not going to and so I've been down that road and there's nobody uh, argues this with me anymore they did for the first couple of days because it sounds so unbelievable inconceivable unimaginable I read chick we got a red chick on the stream, folks. Woo! I gotta go embarrass her again now. <laughs>
I adore, like I worship the ground that lady works, uh, walks on, make no mistake about it, and have for at least eight years. And she always shows up here, always shows up there. I have everything that she's done that I've ever found out there. It's on my computer. And she does the same thing to me where she terrorizes me, terrifies me with reality and keeps me honest, right? And so I try to tone it down for these shows, but I do put the link there below. And I should put a little warning for people. You know how you shouldn't go swimming when you are got a full stomach? I should put some kind of like warning like that there, but... I kind of like, I, I don't, I'm afraid people won't watch it and it's so important to understand how this works to enhance each other synergistically, how, and then, you know, when you're doing that kind of research, uh, like Christine will do, like uh, Miss Moray will do, you got to realize, like, you can never get in an interview and cover everything. You have so much knowledge, you just got to keep plugging away every chance you get and jump in. And so, that was a good distraction for me. Hi, Miss Milky. Hi, Red Chick. Here we go. Big Now TV. And folks, um, make sure you subscribe to these people, you know. Uh, Red Chick and Miss Milky and Nuber Imagery. Hey, bud. Hey, I got all my pictures down in the corner, eh? Haha. <laughs> Took me like 25 minutes. I said, no, he's not going to get me tonight. I got my glasses on. Europrop's not going to be beating on me tonight. I'm way ahead of the crowd tonight. And I got the big screen up there so I can get the conversation and then the picture of me that I hate so much, but it keeps me on track because I can just now change photos fairly fast. That's really handy. And uh, that's a crazy photo, isn't it? The guy who took that died and they had to bury the camera he used with him. Think about that one. Okay, there's one other thing that I need to cover that I forgot about, so let me come back up for a second. That's a now you hear about security, you hear about security efforts? I'll bring up the comment section over here on top. But see, that's garbage bags full of uh, pellets and pieces of the pellets from that explosion I showed you earlier. And they blew all over the place you know, for a couple of miles, little particles. But if you find one of those little pieces, what you're supposed to do, according to the nuclear rules, is dig up 900 foot topsoil around that little piece, not pick it up, <laughs> not even go near it, and put a fence around that, dig up six inches of the topsoil 900 feet around, put a fence around that, walk away with a Geiger counter. If you happen to know what it is, you can calibrate a Geiger counter to read it, but you might die trying. And you're supposed to walk away and then put flags, universal flags, so nobody ever goes near that. And so that's right alongside their highways, right? And Al-Qaeda can come down there and, with his little Geiger counter and get a dirty bomb. Or you can just go over to Afghanistan and pick up one of the bullets they fired over there. Or you can just go down to Sellafield and hang out by the Columbia River and get a few bucketfuls of that stuff coming out at you. Or Sellafield, or go down off San Francisco, go jigging for a 45-gallon drum. That's not to kill... Like, that 45-gallon drum, if you were to take a couple of liters out of that, that's enough to kill everybody on the planet. Many times over, and all the mammals. Just dump it in the ocean, because you don't know what to do with it. And so do you think for one second, if that's what they've been doing for 50 years, is dumping it in the ocean, because they don't know what the hell to do with it. They can't deal with it, because it kills people so quick. What are you going to do with it? Well, let's get a pit and dump it in there and run like... Even those people are heroes. And they know what they're doing. Those people that are walking into Fukushima every day, they're heroes. I don't know how the hell they can do it. It must be like post-traumatic stress. We have no idea of what that takes. Even the Kuzus, the, the mob, they must wake up every morning and just shake their head. How could you not? Knowing what? I know and can conceive in the video below, the first one of um, Chernobyl. That's the closest you'll ever want to get to what's happening in Fukushima when you watch that. You'll understand what I'm talking about. That'll be the closest you will ever want if you ever had any doubt. And remember, you know, there's billing three at Fukushima is a million times worse than any other reactor, but only one third of Chernobyl melted, and that was one third the size of the reactors 
at Fukushima, and they didn't have uh, the one in Chernobyl didn't have pools above it. Ah, yeah, crazy, isn't it? I'll come up and start saying hi to people. Miss Milky the Clown one says secrecy bill passed in Japan a ten year prison sentence for whistleblowers. Would you live that long? I wonder. Timely as they removed. Uh, yeah, I can't see him actually doing it, but that's what they're saying. I know. Yeah, there ain't no building four, folks. You're off to jail for ten years. Hi, Andrew. Is there a counter that plugs into a computer and picks up everything and explains it? No. Nope. See, a lot of these isotopes, you don't know what they are. They're locked away. You need you need uh, the numbers just to calibrate your Geiger counter for that particular isotope. And that's what I mean. You like you would overwhelm a facility that does that because there's 1,300 Geiger counters. So imagine if all kinds of countries started looking for these 1,300 isotopes. Because that's what you would need to protect your community. They even have an idea. you got to catch when it's airborne. you got to catch those rads when they're airborne. Coming at you. And they're coming at you. These death plumes are flying out of that those bowels of hell non-stop. And you know, that's why they got the sarcophagus on Chernobyl. To stop these death plumes from coming out. And uh, Radchik had sent me a video. And I put it on there a couple of videos back there. Was that... I can't remember the name of it. It was a really good video. It was about a study on birds and how they coincided with the death plumes from Chernobyl and a rainfall and how one scientist was able to work that out and then the repercussions for the next several years after that, how he tracked all of that. Amazing. Um, I'll have to find and start including it in these videos too because that's a really important one. And I did get it and put it on the other one, but you know me. I'm, I knew we were magic. Japan, Japan will demand our heads. Hope so. On a stick. I look good on a stick. I've rendered today's update, but I'm riveted here. Yeah, I bet. You're a good soul. Hi, camshaft. Uh, cucumber. Andrews, a mass spectrometer, does something like that, but still needs a base. And then you need the, the ones to count the x ray machines, the x rays, right? The, the actual high energy particles around that's in those bags. Right? Nobody even talks about that stuff that the workers are getting pounded with. And because, you know, there's just, it's endless. It's just an endless thing. And see, if you don't know how to use your Geiger counter, you'll get the wrong reading. So the readings could be 10 times worse. But because you sniffed too early, or you didn't know what you were doing, or it wasn't calibrated properly, there's so many things you can go wrong, or a weak battery, you'll get the wrong reading. And you really got to know what you're doing. You got actually got to have some kind of training to use that properly. And they're not meant for high count particles. They like the Geiger counter only gets the low count particles. It's meant for bananas, potatoes, right, Nubra? <laughs> and nobody should ever mention those words in a real conversation about Fukushima. But we mention it because we mock it. We disrespect anybody that in the media in particular and the experts that are using those terminologies because they didn't put any thought hopefully into the words uh, that they were using because a banana has nothing to do with something that will fill you full of tumors okay bananas don't fill you with tumors these this radiation this gamma these betas these alphas these isotopes will drop you they will drop you see Dana on a stick yeah i like that maybe we'll call the show that from now on Dana on the stick show <laughs> Put Dana's head on a stick show. Or just call it the Fukushima Horror Show, because that's what it really truly is. It's a friggin' horror show. Uh, let me come down and say hi to a few people. Bystander witnessed something. I can't catch up with the conversation. I'm starting to figure it out, though, after when I go through the comments. I'm starting to learn how to, to understand things a bit quicker, because it's a little weird. It's different when you're talking, right? Hi, Ozzy. Thanks for the cast. We need more people. Yeah, oh yeah, well, you're welcome. Thanks for coming in. It's more important. I'm here, regardless now. There's nothing I can do about it. I stopped having panic attacks a few weeks ago. That's a bonus. You gotta like that. Panic attacks is not good for you. And so you look at the ocean current, and then <laughs> you look at... Um, the jet streams and El Ninos and all this, and you say, okay, well, there's little pockets out there where it's not going to be as hideous as other places, where you're not going to get mauled quite as quick. You can't escape it. 
And so you got to think about, because I understand a lot about health and how GMO has no nutrients and toxins engineered into it, I always try to remember to tell people about the very basic ideas and concepts like dandelion, which is the most important one anyway. How you can cook your food in dandelion, just take the dandelion, the root and everything, give it a wash, the flour, everything, put it in your pot, fill it up with water before you boil your potatoes or everything else, and cook it. You don't have to eat it if you don't want to. Just cook your food in that and it'll soak up all that. Every mineral and every nutrition your body needs. A complete uh, load and there's no GMO, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> but we hear about mutated. But they're a gift that for uh, thousands of years people depended upon those, uh, particularly on the ocean so they wouldn't get scurvy. But dandelion is such a good thing for you. Just that can save your life. It's been known to reverse cancer after chemo chemotherapy had destroyed people and they were sent home to die with a few days to live. And they started drinking all the dandelion tea they could. I think it's only the only recommend like four cups a day, but three months later he was totally clean again. And he did, they didn't give him no time to live, only a few days go home with your family, you're, you're, we can't do anything else for you after the chemotherapy. And the cancer was all gone in three months. And I covered it on my site, and I got a, in the very near, I'll get that video up about that stuff. But then you have a turmeric, spice, turmeric. Just 700 peer review studies, one of the most healthiest things you could ever imagine, particularly now. <laughs> It's one of the most important things you can imagine. And I got a whole bunch of that stuff, like um, um, there's so many of these different ones. That's why I say I gotta, I gotta do, like I, the video I done today, I gotta do one really soon like that for uh, the nutrients, for the cancers, for the anti-cancers that have been proven in peer review academic studies. And like turmeric got 700 universities have done studies on it. Another 700 have peer reviewed it. Right? Different properties of how good it is for the human body. That's amazing. So, <laughs> and then DCA is a mineral you can buy at your health store and it's been showed repeatedly in studies to reduce all tumors by 70% in three weeks. Now, if you've got the isotope in you, it's beating away, it's beating away, but you're, 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 you're containing, you're not getting these big old tumors where you can't get your arm down. And if you move off the coastline, you won't have to worry about those types of tumors as much. But if you stay on the coastline of the Pacific Rim or in Hawaii or in California or British Columbia, anywhere, uh, you're in a lot of, you're, you'll get a few years. But these kind of tumors, these kind of isotopes are not like the other cancers where it might take 20 or 30 or 40 years. People tell you that, don't know what they're talking about. These types of things, look, during, during the Gulf War, when the soldiers walked through places that were shot up with depleted uranium, within 72 hours they were down and full of sores, teeth and hair falling out. Within 72 hours that was happening to them. And that was from the bullets they were firing in, in 1991 in the Gulf War. And so radiation, the big radiation that's coming at you, this stuff is so hideous, it won't be as quick as that because you won't have that, those particulates, right? Right, because you never walked where the bullets smacked into something, spread everywhere. You didn't walk past the tanks or stuff like that that were hit with depleted uranium. A lot of the tanks, Americans' tanks, were killed by their own tanks shooting them, because they're shooting at them. like a warthog. All it shoots is depleted uranium, and it shoots a ton and a half a minute. That's about seventy Nagasaki bombs worth of radiation a minute out of the warthog, the A-10 warthog. And they got a new model now. Probably shoots. Um, 100 Nagasaki bombs worth of radiation. It's, it's, it's not coded. These, these 50 calibers are not coded and they're not tipped. They're just pure uranium, 238, 237, 239. And that uh, when, it, when it leaves the barrel, it catches fire. And so it starts expelling the particulates immediately into the nano size, and if you breathe any of that in, so it goes in the tank and they breathe it. The stories and lots of it, there was a, a study done on 160 soldiers that came back from there, and they had children beforehand, and the ch uh, out of 160, it was something like 70 or 80 of them, the kids were born without eyes or nose or mouth or ears, deformed. And a lot of the soldiers had brought it back in their equipment, the, the, the contaminants of the, that's how dangerous it is. Just that, you know, where they took back their clothing and their bag had dust into it. 
Uh, all of Iraq should be dug up and put on a nuclear waste site, let's put it that way. And all of Afghanistan, everything there should be dug up and put on the waste site, including the graveyards, particularly the graveyards, because these people ingested so much isotopes. And then if you cremate people, you liberate these isotopes back into the environment for another uh, billion years. I know, Dana, Dana. Okay, that's, that's long enough. Let me come up and say hi. i got to go check the time. I'll probably pass me hour. Me, 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 beep, beep, hour. No, 59 minutes. Pretty darn good. Let's say hi. Yeah, dandelion tea is really good. Don't overcook it. Don't overboil it. Enjoy it better that way. You get more nutrition out of it that way. Low boil it, but boil it. Let it steep for 40 minutes. And you can drink it cold. Uh, I fill the pot up, see, and throw more roots and the flowers, leaves in. But the flowers are really good. Mix it in with your jams. You can eat it raw. It doesn't hurt you, see. You can actually, and I do, all the time. Hi, Tom. Camshaft. Make, M-A-K-K. -K. That's a hard one to pronounce. Moments, nothing more. Live rain never yield. Yeah, I can't pronounce that one ever. I'm trying, though. News Eye 77's third watch. Red Chick, uh, Big Now TV, Steve, Dwayne, Campbell, Ozzy, Miss Milky. Miss Milky! Thank you, as usual, folks. And let me see Albert. I'm going to have to catch all the comments, and I will, like normal. I always read them twice, at least, anyway. So keep them coming, folks. Uh, Nuber Magic, but, yeah, don't want to forget about you, man. His, uh, these folks, their links are below the video. If you're watching this later and you're trying to find who I'm talking about, you'll find their links underneath these videos all the time. Jerry, hi. Yeah, you too, Tom. And that looks about good, I guess. Well, I'm not going to try with any of the comments. I'm just saying hi to people. Patrick, checks and balances before I give it up for the night because we're gone to an hour now. That's really cool. It was a good, really good night. Got a lot off me shoulders because it's been eating away at me for hours. I just keep learning so much more. That's the whole thing about it. It's just non-stop. It's not like you just read a book. Just You, you read a book about everything. It's crazy. Hi, Screamate. Ray Clay. Lunar, Nuber Magic again, Hawk Boy. Well, I covered that Hawk Boy. Why do I say Geiger counters are useless? I cover it. Like, if it gives you comfort, it's good. If you. It's only meant for low radiation, right? It's not meant for the high count particles. And if you don't know what you're doing, you could, you know, you're really. Yeah, thank you, Miss Milky. And I covered it all anyway. Uh, you, you popped off the screen. I can't remember who it was now. Hawk boy, I think it was. I was talking to him. But yeah, I covered it. I know. It makes you feel better. And it goes off. Run. Run. That's the, my voice when it goes off. Because you don't know what it is. But it probably means you should be gone by now. See? Wherever you're living. Tyson. David. We'll catch you folks tomorrow night, everybody. Miss Milky. Radchick again. Thank you, folks. Nubro Magic. I got it. Uh, um. Thomas Ackerman's below, there's Susan's below the Forts News. We got Kevin Blanche's uh, link is below, folks. There's so much information. Every time I put these videos up there, you can come in, cruise them sites, and say hi to these people, watch their videos. They're working, amazing amount of work they put into their videos. It's an amazing amount of work. And so it's a good spot, see? It's well-fitting, the way I see it anyway. We'll see you folks tomorrow. Have a nice night. We need to get subscribed and get this unity stronger and beat YouTube at their own game. Okay, that's what this is about. Like I say, go to the remix button, hit the remix button. That way you'll have this video and, and keep up with this. Otherwise, you know, YouTube's just going to control us, guys, and it's, it's really bad.